Hi, I'm your host Vasco Duarte. Welcome to the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast, where we share tips and tricks from Scrum Masters around the world. Every day, we bring you inspiring answers to important questions that all Scrum Masters face day after day. Hello, everybody. Welcome to one more week of the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast. And uh, this week, joining us from South Africa is Nilesh Makan. Hi, Nilesh. Welcome to the show. Hi, how are you doing? Thank you for having me on. Absolutely. Nilesh is the founding director of Padawan Consulting. Love the name, by the way, Thank where you. the vision is to build transform businesses through transform people. He works with companies in the arena of digital transformation, considering how to leverage people, processes, and technology to design and build innovative solutions. So Nilesh, that was a short intro. Tell us a little bit more about yourself and how did you end up becoming a Scrum Master? Thank you, Vasco. So yes, I've, I've had quite an interesting career uh, and, and, and what brought me to, towards being a, a Scrum Master and Agile coach in particular. So I started my career out at IBM where I, I did a lot of development work in the systems management space, uh, helping companies in, implement system management tools. So tools that allow you to manage entire infrastructures. Um, I then moved into business process consulting, and then I moved into the security space. I then moved to PwC, where I headed up information, uh, where I headed up IT strategy and governance. So very much within the strategic space. I then moved to a petrochemical company in South Africa called Sassel, where I headed up information security. And then I decided to do something completely different. And I went into enterprise risk management. And that was really great because it gave a really holistic view of the businesses. And we did it at a board level for a multinational. So you got to understand everything from macroeconomics to diversity and the importance thereof to you know boards and risks uh, relating to climate and infrastructure and then that entire value chain, which is fantastic. But I did miss the technology side of things. And uh, I, I then, Cecil was embarking on its digital strategy transformation. And I decided to go and uh, apply for a role within the, the, the ambit of, of digital strategy. And that's where I really got wind of agility and what it meant in Agile. And I fell in love with the concept, you know, having rolled out many technologies and many solutions using a waterfall method and understanding the frustrations and challenges thereof, particularly within the information security space. I really kind of fell in love with the concept of what Agile was. And also the importance from a digital strategy perspective around, you know, when we think about digital strategy, people think it's about the technology, but often it's about the people, processes, and technology, right? It's about people first. How, how do we make sure that we get the most out of people? Because there's so much to learn when it comes to, to digital transformation that not one single person can know everything, right? So we need to leverage the best of everyone's minds. Um, and that's where I love this notion of, you, you know, these new ways of work, digital transformation, and how to drive innovation in, in, in businesses. I then started my own consultancy, you know, helping coach and teach people around agility and, and help, help c- c- companies to, to transform in this regard. Absolutely. That's a quite colorful background. And uh, I really like that mention of looking at the business holistically when you talked about enterprise risk modeling. And that's exactly what we try to do, right? Like one of the key challenges for us as Scrum Masters is to get beyond the concept of our team and understand that actually the team fits a context, something that enables the business to grow and succeed by serving the customers, by serving the end users that our products are supposed to serve. Now, Niles, now we turn our attention to the role we have, and uh, in your case, as as a consultant, as an agile coach, and uh, how sometimes life throws us some curveballs and things don't really go as we expect. So we wanted you to focus on one of those stories where you were involved in, with either a team or an organization and things didn't really go as you expected. And, and we want you to dive to you know, the details, what was happening, what were you observing at that time? And we'll dive into the learnings and conclusions later on. But first, tell us that story, Nilesh. It's a story that's ongoing for me. Um, so, so at the moment, one of the things we, I, I've been doing is I've been investing in and working on a product called Goodwill. And the challenge around Goodwill is that we look for a problem, particularly in South Africa, that that needed to be solved. 
And what we found is, uh, p- particularly aligned, aligned to the sustainable development goals uh, uh, around no poverty, is the fact that about 70% of South Africans don't have access to a will and a testament. So if something happens to them, unfortunately, you know, there's no inheritance that's left to their loved ones. And what happens is that causes further family dramas and family feuds. Um, It exacerbates gender inequality because in certain instances, culturally, the men get involved and inheritance tend to go to the men in the family, uh, leaving women at a further disadvantage. So we kind of looked at this problem and we thought, how can we solve it? And we we kind of came up with an idea that said, why don't we use a technology that's very prevalent in South Africa, uh, that people are familiar with, where you don't really need much data and you don't need to install apps. So we looked at WhatsApp, which is a great example of a technology that's so pervasive. And what we did is we designed a, a, a WhatsApp chatbot. And the chatbot is effectively acts like a lawyer in, in essence, right? But but a, a lawyer that, that speaks very simple language because I find that, you know, when we think about law uh, and, and legalese, like legalese is an interesting term, right? It's, it's words that are used by lawyers within a circle to confuse people. It's almost like programming, by the way. It ha- they have their own syntax <laughs> and, and rules and you have to declare variables at the start of the contract and so on. Languages are very interesting, right? Because e- each domain has its own language. You know, when, when I teach Scrum, I always talk about the, the, the language of Scrum in itself, right? It, it, it's its own language. When we think about backlogs and story refinements and the, the words that are used, the lingo that is used, unless you have a common understanding of that language, it makes it very difficult to implement effectively. So you want to get that language resolved. And, and, and you're right. It, it is about getting people to understand language at a different level. You know, I think a lot of people say that, you know, if you want to drive a transformation, sometimes you just have to avoid the, the, the language that we use. Maybe we can call it scrum ease as opposed to legal ease, right? <laughs> but the idea is to say, how do, how do we shift that conversation so that it's re- really about the value that we're getting and, and the importance of what needs to be delivered? So what we did is we created a chatbot and the chatbot effectively simplifies language and gets people to fill in uh, the, the necessary information, your personal details, are you married? Do you have any property? Do you have any vehicles? Are there any heirlooms that you would like to leave to any of your loved ones? Who's your executor, et cetera. So it takes you through a process, effectively, massive decision tree. And then it generates a, a dynamic world template at the end of the day. So the world is given to you and it's all personalized and customized. A, a fairly simple technology. But what I find is that there's this notion of what people want and what people need. And that's something that that I never really came to grips with before. You know, I think people need a will, but but do people want a will? And that's a very interesting question because it's time consuming, it's difficult. You don't have the ability to just easily go ahead and create one. Um, And it it takes effort. Um, So in terms of a failure, like, you know, while we've built this really lovely technology, we haven't received a massive uptake on it. And, and the question is, you know, uh, around whether we we kill, persevere, pivot or pause, right? And we kind of stuck in that situation at the moment where we've got the technology built. It is an absolute need. We've tested it with, uh, you know, a lot of people on the ground. Whoever has gone through it really likes it. But how do you get people to go through it? How do you get to shift that behavior around people's wants versus needs. And and that's quite an interesting dynamic. Yeah, absolutely. And it also highlights another aspect of how difficult the Scrum Master role is, because at some point, the focus should not be the team, it should be the product itself. And, And in your case, like adoption as the main problem, like how do we get people to start adopting and start to see the benefit before the product itself can grow? And, uh, uh, Usually what we talk about here on the podcast is that scrum masters and product owners need to form a tight partnership, right? Because it's not really the team only that creates the product. It It's also the interaction with stakeholders, the interaction with the market itself, uh, the need to experiment, the need to learn in the market. So I, I think that's a, a great story that also highlights that this aspect of the scrum master role is very often forgotten and it's definitely not taught 
in your CSM courses, like certified Scrum Master course will not teach you how to be a great product developer. It will teach you how to be a great Scrum Master. But as Scrum Masters, we very often work within product development environments, just like you mentioned. So are there any tips though, like from what you're going through now and what you've learned in the past, are, are there any tips that you can leave for our Scrum Master friends that might be at some point dealing with this kind of problem? Yeah, and, and I suppose it goes back to the notion of language. When we talk about the language of failure, and and I, I know it's it, it, it's often seen as a a mark of uh, prominence when you fail, and you you know as a startup, um, it, it's one of the the scars you get and, and makes you more resilient and stronger. I do feel though that that sometimes when people think about failure, it's not often positive, and, and especially in, in big customers and big corporates. You know, one of the previous businesses I worked at um, was a manufacturing business, right? And, and, and in some instances there, failure meant fatality. Uh, you know, people are on the plant, they're working, and something bad happens. It means people lose their lives. And, and in, in certain instances, when we talk about failure, we cannot accept that type of failure. So, you know, I think the mindset and the language of failure while, you know, in a startup, it may be okay, in different instances, in different situations, it may not be okay. And I think you mentioned the word uh, experiment, right? That, that's a much easier term to deal with, right? Go back to scientific language and, and first principles around what, what are we really trying to do, right? We have a hypothesis that we set, and we need to be able to see if the hypothesis is true or not, right? If it's not true, that can be deemed as failure, uh, but it's not saying it's failure. It's just saying that we tested the hypothesis and it's not true. If you just reframe it and you rephrase the language a little bit, I think you can get a lot more momentum rather than saying, oh, we failed, uh, which can sometimes be a bit heart-wrenching um, and also very difficult for, for seniors in, in, in corporates to, to understand. Absolutely. And that's a great tip. Focus on momentum and learning rather than failure. Thank you for sharing that, Nilesh. Pleasure. Monday is about what we learn from our obstacles and our failures. But tomorrow is Team Tuesday here on the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast. We explore teams and their journeys, the habits they develop that threaten their performance, how each of our guests help their teams evolve, and the one key lesson they learned from that experience. We really hope you liked our show. And if you did, why not rate this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes? Share this podcast and let other Scrum Masters know about this valuable resource for their work. Remember that sharing is caring. 